In this video, we will be exploring dyscalculia. We will be looking at its symptoms and some of the things that you can do to make your child's learning experience in mathematics far better. So stay tuned. So what is dyscalculia? Dyscalculia is an individual's ability to learn number concepts and anything relating to mathematics. It hinders a person's ability to perform accurate mathematical calculations and use logical reasoning and solve mathematical problems. It is sometimes known as number dyslexia or maths dyslexia. Dyscalculia definitions and diagnosis are still in its early infancy stages. However, it is said that 25% of the population have some sort of mathematical learning difficulty. This prevents them from successfully progressing in schools, further education and jobs. This learning disorder can affect all aspects of life, such as counting money, telling the time, or even performing simple maths problems, resulting in students with dyscalculia finding maths difficult and just not wanting to learn. What are some of the signs and symptoms that you can look out for of signs of dyscalculia? Well, it affects people differently depending on at what stage of their life they are. Younger primary school students may find it difficult when they're doing counting. They may skip numbers, for example, when they are counting backwards. They may have trouble relating numbers to real life quantity. For example, two means two of something. They may struggle identifying and finding number patterns. For example, arranging something from the smallest to the largest or from the tallest to the shortest. They may have trouble recalling basic mathematical facts such as the multiplication table or that four minus three is equal to one. They may find themselves using their fingers for simple mathematical calculations. They may struggle to recognize greater than or less than signs. They may get confused and mix up addition with a multiplication sign. They may have trouble telling the time, especially on an analog clock. Even if they were to read a digital clock, they may have trouble understanding it. For example, if the time is 10.25, they may not know how long it is until 11 o'clock. Secondary school students, on the other hand, go on and learn new techniques, new concepts. For example, percentages, number, ratio, area and they may come across new problems. They may find difficulty in applying simple maths into everyday and real life problems. They may have trouble comparing two amounts. They may get confused with their left and right direction and often they will find topics such as bearing very very difficult. They may not understand graphs and gradients. They may have trouble understanding the estimation of distances and speeds. Now I'm going to share with you some of the things that you can do to help students with dyscalculia. So how do we help someone with dyscalculia? You could use a structured approach such as scaffolding. Scaffolding is a technique that we use in maths that can break down a bigger question into smaller chunks. Sometimes you may have noticed we have exam questions that are labeled bronze, silver, and gold. Well, the bronze questions are the ones that you need to target because they're the ones that break down into smaller little chunks. So there'll be parts such as A, B, and C. So this structured approach where we break down the question will help a learner with dyscalculia understand the question a lot more easier. Having a multi-sensory approach. This means a student will use their senses of sight, hearing, and touch and movement to understand a mathematical concept a lot more easier. This could be using a number line, for example, or formula sheets, such as area of a circle, because it's a lot more visual. Using counters for ratio, or using money for change. It also helps to get the pupil to explain what they have done and to justify their answers when they've solved a mathematical problem. This will then ensure that they have understood the solution and the reasons for taking the various steps into the question. Use fun worksheets that involve games. Sometimes when a student can see a whole list of questions in one go, this can be quite intimidating. So one way would be to block out all the questions and slowly unveil each question one at a time, and that way that will solve some form of anxiety for that student. When learning new materials and new topics, it is helpful to understand the core mechanics and skills before you address the word problems. The start of the smaller questions before you start leading on to the harder questions. Underline key words and highlighting important parts of the question. This will help key parts of the question pop out and the students to visualize a lot more easier. For example, when collecting like terms in an algebraic expression, drawing diagrams and labeling. This is very helpful in topics such as trigonometry or Pythagoras. This is highly encouraged to do 
if you want to better understand and solve the maths problem. Showing and emphasizing key concepts in your working out is also very, very helpful for a student. For example, if you refer to the videos on solving linear algebraic equations, you'll see using visuals such as arrows or brackets along the side explaining what's happening in each step. I hope these tips help someone out there with dyscalculia with their learning experiences and make their mathematics journey more enjoyable. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos like this and of course, free maths lessons. Goodbye for now and see you in the next video.